step into my office. Now, my name is Reptile Riff, and I love to share my enthusiasm and my energy about how much I love wildlife and how we should conserve the environment that they live in. Because whether you realize it or not, you're living in the environment too, just from inside your house. Now, I want to get you closer and more intimate with these animals than people will really ever get. And I know about their behavior, and I understand how to take care of them in captivity and how to find them in the wild. And so I'm going to make videos about both, where you can enjoy them with me and you can share this passion for wildlife. Now, I want you to share not just this video, but the facts you get to learn and the cool photos you'll get to see through our footage. So thank you for going on this adventure with me. Let's see what we find today. Hey guys, so today we're actually going to be taking care of a bearded dragon, showing you how to clean it and learning all kinds of different things about them. Now, this species of lizard is actually from Australia and it's very common in the pet trade. Now look at how thick and beautiful he is. Now, if you see, he's got a lot of extra skin under his chin there and that's not necessarily fat, a little bit, but it's got a lot of muscle for biting down and also there's a lot of elastic folds of skin that will kind of puff up and he'll flex those muscles and he'll puff up with a little air too in that throat. And so that'll help the black skin underneath kind of show and then they get the big black beard whenever they're upset, intimidated, or they're trying to attract the female's attention. So it serves a few different purposes. Now, we gotta keep the lamps nice and hot because this guy's from Australia and it's very hot and dry out there. Most bearded dragons don't even actually drink water from their environment. They get the water from the plants that they'll eat. So the plants are gonna be moist on the inside and the bearded dragon, for their body, that's actually enough water to sustain themselves out in the woods. Now we're gonna go ahead and start cleaning up this guy and first we gotta remove them. So this is kind of how you're gonna handle your bearded dragon. So this is how you're gonna handle a lizard. So you'll put your hand gently under the head, okay? Not right in the mouth, under the, under the chin or the throat. And you're just going to kind of scoop the lizard to gently crawl up on your hand and you kind of lift up a little bit. The key thing is not to shake or restrain the animal because then it's just gonna thrash and scratch you and the animal's gonna be scared. They might even lose their tail. Some lizards break their tail off. Bearded dragons are a part of that group. Here we go. Now bearded dragons make great pets because they're very hardy animals and a lot of people that have pets don't really know what they're doing. And so unfortunately, a lot of animals get hurt that way. So uh, when we're cleaning, we're gonna put him in this big bucket. Now, while he's in there, he might get scared or you might have to pee, right? So what you wanna do is you just have a couple paper towels. So he'll have something soft on his belly, and something to absorb any pee so it won't get absorbed into his skin. He's getting a little nervous, but it's okay. It's okay. So he's losing his balance. That's why, oh, go ahead, come on in. Get the look, get the shot. There you go. So nice, you wanna be nice and gentle. Now their claws are a little sharp, but don't let that scare you. It does pinch a little bit, but it's not as bad as him getting scared and stressing out and not eating. There you go. There you go, buddy boy. 
So he can't, this is a tall enough bucket where he'll try to jump out and he won't be able to. Isn't he a cutie? All right. Now folks, what we're gonna do next is actually take care of these lights. Now these heat lamps, like I mentioned, are actually very hot and that keeps the bearded dragon happy, but it'll melt a plastic table uh, like, like a burrito, okay? And you could accidentally burn your house down if you leave these lights on and you put them on a countertop or you put them on a blanket it's a, or a carpet. So you have to be very, very careful. So you always wanna make sure, turn them off. Okay, let them cool down for a second or two. Um, if you'd like, you can grab a little washcloth. I'll just grab it with my bare hands. And then you can put it on some metal, like the screen of another cage. Um, or a towel floor is also great. Now this is all very, I know it seems a little like, a little detailed, but this is a very important because you could accidentally light your house on fire. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove all the stuff out of my way. All right, now what we have here is poop and all kinds of stuff. Now, if you just pick up the cage with all this junk in it, you could break the glass and it's gonna be very, very heavy. So what I'm gonna do is take everything out, remove all the furniture, is what you call it. I'm gonna go spray it down outside. That was easy. <laughs> now, I'm gonna go ahead and return him to his natural habitat. Now, the uh, bearded dragon has got fresh food, he's got fresh water, he's got fresh everything. Clean windows is gonna feel great. Now, it's important that you try to clean your tank, you know, every so often, especially when they make a lot of poop, because then they have to breathe that air in, that's not so good. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and lift him up and put him back in here, doing it so very carefully. Beautiful. This looks like Jabba the Hutt. So this little guy's name is El Sol, which is Spanish for the sun, because he's just so beautiful, like the sun. Now, last things last. I want you to know what they eat in the wild. So they're omnivorous, which is Latin for omni is all and vor is to eat. So an omnivorous animal, such as a bearded dragon, so beautiful, they'll eat uh, anything between, uh, you know, little grasses, little shrubs, flowers, they'll eat grubs, and they'll even snack off of small dead animals or even a large carcass. They'll come and grab a quick piece, uh, piece of dead dry meat and run away. They're scavengers. Uh, now, these animals can actually get pretty big. They can get almost up to two feet long, and they can live 15 years. So this is a commitment when you get one of these guys. Isn't he cute? All right, guys. Now, I hope you enjoyed me and El Sol hanging out and redoing the place. Hey guys, thanks for joining us in that crazy wildlife adventure. Now we love teaching everybody all about these animals out here in the wild and even in captivity. This is my buddy here, Cannoli. He's an American alligator. And we both wanted just to say thank you so much for watching.
and we'll see you later, alligator.